All right, so um, the last time I talked, we were talking about going to the hematologist on Thursday. So Monday through Wednesday, I'm not going to lie, was a little nerve-wracking, mainly because you're thinking worst-case scenario, like cancer, um, just based on some of the signs of the blood. And like I said, you got to be careful about Googling and WebMDing things because you try to self-diagnose, right, Ben? Yeah, exactly. Um, and it's been a long time, by the way, Mrs. Robinson, since you've ever been in one of my YouTube videos. Uh, I'm making a guest appearance today, <laughs> been, I been, suppose. Been a very, very long time. I think it's been several years. Yeah, it um, But I think it's important to have her in this video um, because she's obviously very heavily involved in this process as to what's going on. And honestly, she has done a lot of research and Googling and trying to understand a lot of these blood markers. So on Thursday, um, we went back to the hematologist to get a diagnosis since we had the bone marrow biopsy. And to be honest, when the doctor started, he kind of made both of our hearts drop because he's like, I'm, I, this is not what I was expecting, right? So mm -hmm. let's just start there. Um, so our hearts kind of sank and we're like, here we go. Um, mainly because, you know, like I said, I, I do take very good care of myself. I'm on point with my nutrition. Uh, I don't do things like cutting water or salts or particular foods or anything like that. Um, but he came back with something which to be honest was quite unexpected it wasn't there's no sign of cancer in my body which is a good thing i'm Thank very God. you know i'm Thank very God. i'm very very happy about that on the grand scheme of of anything that i could have been diagnosed with i am very happy about that Thank God. and i'm not gonna lie um so that scary moment passed however i was diagnosed with what they call uh, serous atrophy of my bone marrow right. um which is kind of shocking because it's usually associated people with anorexia nervosa, um, you know, severely malnutrition, with severe malnutrition. Right. Um, and I kind of find that as odd. So the question is now, and, and, you know, Gina can talk more about it. We went through all the different types of platelets, all the different types of proteins in the blood. Um, and as Gina could tell you, not one of them reflect anything involving any sort of leukemia or lymphoma. Right. So do you want to talk a little bit more on that? Uh, well, they did, they did a um, extensive analysis of um, basically under a microscope of what the cells looked like. Um, <clears throat> they did almost like pH color tests, um, which would indicate if any of the cells were abnormal, signifying things like lymphoma, leukemia, um, myeloma, um, which were the things that they were looking for uh, to be ruled out initially. And thankfully, uh, all of those markers came back completely normal. Thank goodness. Um, they also checked um, something that they call, and there's like six different names, but to keep it abbreviated, um, an M spike, which is also known as like an M&M &M protein that would be in um, cases of leukemia, myeloma, and things like that, which there was nothing observed that was not present in Greg's blood, thank God. Um, so what, basically, it, this is a process of ruling things out, and that's, that's the way stuff like this goes. When something comes back abnormal, you have to go through a battery of tests so that they can just one by one rule things out. So as Greg said, we are very happy that there were no signs of lymphoma, myeloma, leukemia, things like that. The doctor initially, the hematologist, didn't think that was the case, but there was no way to be sure. So of course that is the, the thing that sticks with you, um, awaiting those results. So this serous atrophy of the bone marrow, basically what it is, basically what it is is that the bone marrow is struggling. Um, and if you know anything about bone marrow, that's pretty much the number one organ in your body that dictates whether or not your organs work properly and your cells are produced properly and things like that. So it's extremely important. Um, it is working extremely hard at this moment in time to produce the cells, both white blood, platelets, everything. Um, right now, the cell numbers are pretty much in line. Uh, the red blood cell count and Greg's hematocrit and hemoglobin are slightly under where they should be, signifying a mild anemia, as well as this serous atrophy. Which Nothing is extreme, some, which is somewhat understandable. 
but mild, which would be obviously um, indicative of the reason why he, he's so tired all of the time, no matter if he sleeps 10 hours, 12 hours, he's still extremely tired, um, which I'll take the anemia because that's something that we can definitely work through and, and it beats the leukemia, the uh, fatigue related to leukemia or any of the other things that we saw um, when we were doing our research. But um, like I said, this, this is something that is, uh, like Greg said, tied to usually um, a, 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 a big amount of weight loss in what they consider a short time period. Now, what is a short time period? Well, based on and what is considered a dramatic weight loss based on the research that you know I've done and the articles I've read and I, I kind of try to read from scientific journals which are abstracts and, and the research what they've used and then the conclusions based on that a lot of times I have to google half of what is stated in the article because I don't know what these words mean um, which is how I spend my time trying to understand this stuff um, and um, basically, there was a, a there was a study done on a 21 year old male who dropped 13.2 kilograms, which is almost 30 pounds of, of weight, in a six month period. Similar to me, by the way. That is pretty much exactly what Greg has done. It's been about a six month period of cutting and about a 30 pound, 28 to 30 pound drop in weight loss. And this young man suffered the same exact thing that Greg is suffering from. There have also been journals that I read about a female that her weight was in line with her height. Her BMI, which we know is an outdated representat representation of anything, but her BMI, if we want to go there, was in line. She still was suffering from these kinds of con this kind of condition. The good thing about it is it seems to be something that it can be reversible. So. We don't know, this also could be a result of a, of a gene mutation, but my feeling is probably not because the mutation happens when you're exposed to uh, basically harmful, harmful, harmful chemicals, like um, if you've been through chemotherapy before, um, and of course other chemicals that are toxic to the system, which as far as we know, Greg yeah, hasn't exposed been to. exposed to. Um, my gut feeling is that this is a result and a, a signal that though Greg eats a sustainable amount of calories and he is, you know, clearly not anorexic, um, internally, I don't think that his organs are understanding that. My gut, and I could be completely wrong because when we go to a really a specialist a, a real specialist on Monday um, to Robert Wood Johnson Hospital they're gonna have to before they draw that conclusion they're gonna have to rule out genetic mutation they're gonna have to rule out other things my feeling is that his his organs inside his bone marrow and and the other things that are being affected through his blood markers are not are feeling that they are not receiving what they need and they're going into almost overdrive to try to compensate. produce and compensate um that's my gut feeling i had a feeling before we even went back for that diagnosis of, of yesterday to the to the regular hematologist that competition or the bodybuilding prep may have something to do with it i wasn't sure but it was in the back of my mind. Um, and again, we don't have any definitive answers. This is not something that is directly right now, we could say related. Probably even after we go to the specialist Monday, he's gonna, like I said, he's gonna have to rule other things out. If other things are ruled out, then my gut is he's probably gonna say, listen, it probably is related to the sustained weight loss. Your body is reacting, telling you, hey, we need more than you're giving us right now. We're not able to perform optimally with what you're giving us. We need more. Um, this is a slap on the wrist. This is a wake up like, hey buddy, you know, these are signs that can't be ignored because if you ignore them, then obviously this is going to progress, maybe not into a malignancy according to the hematologist, but to other organs starting to basically shut down or fail or Bones flare up. 
bad things, which is obviously not what we're looking to go through. No. Um, so my feeling is that this is going to be something that's going to have to be assessed over a time period. I don't think we're going to have a definitive answer Monday. We might get a little bit more clarity Monday from this specialist, but I feel that he's probably going to say, listen, let's rule these things out. If those are ruled out, okay. Once you start reversing and you start putting on a little bit more weight, let's see if these markers start to neutralize um, over time. You know, Greg can't go from 167 and a half to 195 in three months. So this well, is going to take. Can, but that wouldn't be healthy. Wouldn't be healthy. Um, as he starts to gain weight, my feeling is that they're going to keep every maybe three months bringing him back in for blood work to see if those markers start to kind of neutralize. Like I said, the good thing is that it looks like it's something that can be reversed as long as there's nothing else that's causing this, um, which, again, the, the big-time things seem to have been ruled out um, and are ruled out. Um, so that's a good thing. Uh, but this is going to be something that's going to be tracked, I would think, over a 6-month to 12-month period of Greg going back to the blood work as he's slowly putting on weight to see if things start to get better, which hopefully they will. This is also a result, it says, even people with um, gastric bypass surgery. Yeah. Um, anything like that where there's there's a, a good amount of weight lost um, could trigger your body to, whoa, this is, you know, step on the brakes, what's going on here? Um, and that that's pretty much where we are. So we're slowly getting answers, but this is, this is a process. Um, we got a little bit of clarity. We got a little bit of answers yesterday. And Monday, hopefully we'll get a little bit more, but I don't expect a complete and utter diagnosis on Monday. I expect it to be over time. Um, and that's that's pretty much it. Now, the, the, the thing that I'm curious on my part, and I really hate to be the guinea pig for all of this, um, obviously correlation doesn't equal causation. We know that in the, scientific, in the scientific world. So because I've dropped 30 pounds, I'm doing contest prep, may or may not be resulting in whatever this underlying condition is. So I don't want to jump the gun and say right. bodybuilding prep is causing it. Um, but as we know, and I've mentioned this before to all of you who worship bodybuilders, um, especially on the natural side, bodybuilding competitions are not the healthiest of things. And as good as I am, as meticulous as I am, as knowledgeable as I am, I'm starting to see some weird things go on now. Like, like I said, again, it's going to be very, very interesting, and I'm not going to allow the doctor just to make a blanket statement without being able to prove it. No, he's got to um, stuff out. We, we have to rule everything out yeah. because there might be an underlying genetic mutation or autoimmune disease or something right. else going on that I didn't know that I had yeah. or is just starting to show signs of itself now um, that may be resulting in this bone marrow problem. Now, I explained in the MRI that my marrow looked blotchy. The reason for that is because basically my bone marrow is not replicating the way it's supposed to be and it's being refilled with this gelatinous material which is why I have that splotch look. Um, so Monday is, is going to be an interesting conversation. You know also I know a lot of bodybuilders, a lot of them, both on the natural and on the drug side, who have eaten nothing but tilapia and asparagus for months on end, who have starved themselves, who have done ridiculous things that I have never, ever, ever done, who have also suffered injuries and gone for MRIs and have never seen this before. I've never even heard of this diagnosis before. I've heard of thyroid shutting down. I've heard of no sex hormone. I've heard of testosterone shutting off. I've heard of these things. People have to go into HRT. I've never heard of a bone marrow issue. So it could be that I'm one of those rare cases that when I get this dieted down, that this is how my body decides to respond. And in all honesty, and I'd really hate for this to happen because, you know, when I was 25, I was basically told by the doctors that if I kept playing basketball the way I was playing it, I would have had a knee replacement already. Um, so that was something that I really enjoyed doing that I no longer do. I mean, I could shoot around, but I can't play ball. So bodybuilding became my next thing, which obviously, don't get me wrong, listen, it, it, the, worst, the worst is passing. I don't have cancer. So, you know, on the priority of, of life things, it's not that big of a deal. But it would really suck that. And also, too, the other thing is, if I was dieting down all the time, like every six months, every year for a show, I could understand maybe this happening. But the fact that I take two to three years at least in between shows to reverse diet, to get my, my weight up, to stay in a healthy state, push my metabolism up, you know, really pack on some healthy muscle, 
all those kind of things. I can understand if I was dieting down all the time with something like this happening, but that's not the case. So, you know, my, my thing is, and what I'd be upset about is if, if this is how my body's gonna respond to prep, uh, unfortunately, I would have to really consider never competing again. Mm -hmm. um, depending on, I should have touched the phone. Um, but never competing again because as I get older, can my body recover from this anymore? Right. And the main concern is I lift very, very heavy weights in the off season. And if the bone marrow isn't recovering the way it's supposed to or stays in this state for an extended period of time, I will become ex very susceptible to fractures. Um, and if you're thinking of some guy who likes to you know, squat 400, deadlift 500, aiming for 600 once I get back to my off season, bench, bench is 300 plus, throws around some serious weights, the last thing I need to do is cock back, squat, or go to deadlift something, and now start fracturing my spine, my legs, things in my hips, the ball and socket joints, um, anything like that, because obviously it's showing in my shoulder joint. So I, I don't want to cause extensive damage where now I'm starting to suffer all these breaks that I need to heal from and may never heal from because my bones are just now, you know, the, the marrow's been destroyed, it's not coming back. Right. Um, so these are all things, and I'm not jumping the gun, I'm being very unbiased, I'm just keeping an, un, you know, an open mind to both ends of the conversation. I plan on, you know, talking to my the specialist about everything, and then, like my wife said, you know, maybe this is once I start to reverse, you know, start seeing if this EOS absolute marker returns back to normal, um, and then I'm I'm guessing at some point, six seven months down the line, that I'm probably going to have to return for another MRI just to see what the bone marrow is doing. Um, and my hopes is, if it really is, I mean, like, granted, if that's what the worst case scenario is, then unfortunately after this season's over, because I'm basically seven days out right now, um, I'm just going to have to retire from competitive bodybuilding. I can still train. I can still live a normal, normal lifestyle. Um, it just sucks that I won't be able to, to step on stage anymore. It's not the end of the world, but it's something I would like to do. Um, you know, if my son ever gets into lifting, it's something, you know, as a father and a son, I'd love to teach him just to push his body to another level if that's what he wants to do. Obviously, I would never force it on him because, like I said, and I, would, I wouldn't even suggest he competes at least 25 years old anyway. I wouldn't want him doing it as a teenager. Um, but that's just kind of where we are right now. All right, guys, I hope you find all this informative, and uh, we'll talk to you later.